Um, hi, guys. So this is our Zoom session related to economics major. We're going to start um, just about now. So yeah, today we're going to have several speakers. First of, uh, first of them is going to be the uh, fourth year economics student uh, Ali Dishibayev, who's going to talk about his internship experience. Then we're going to have two clubs, KFSA and Case Club. So stay tuned to that. And uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Ali. The floor is yours. Uh, OK, thank you, Alina. Uh, hi, guys. How are you? Uh, are you from uh, first year or second, maybe third year students are here also? Okay, okay. Uh, then now uh, I'm going to talk about uh, basically about my uh, internship experience and uh, how uh, I did get managed to get it. Uh, first of all, uh, I uh, have now internship in Ernest and Young. Uh, it is big four company uh, in the department of uh, strategy and uh, transactions. And here we have other departments. It is business valuation and the merger and acquisitions and kind of basically it's all. Uh, so uh, what is the kind of uh, internship about is? Uh, basically, we study the market, we uh, do this kind of financial analysis and a lot of uh, stuff that is correlated with finance. In order to work in such fields, you have uh, to have some kind of little background in financing, actually. Uh, so uh, regarding uh, how kind of did, can you get to find internship? First of all, uh, it's the most easiest way. It's kind of uh, have an account in uh, Headhunter, actually. You can uh, just enter the uh, word internship and kind of internship finance, internship, I don't know, maybe a biology. And uh, uh, the uh, kind of website will provide you kind of variety of internships and a lot of companies look for interns in this kind of websites. Uh, you can just click apply and then it's going to be easy. A uh, second source of uh, internship when you uh, can look for is uh, the uh, website of our Nazarbayev University. It is called uh, CAS, I think. You can uh, get registered to this website and uh, usually uh, they send you uh, the, I don't know, the list of internships weekly. And uh, you can get applied to internships from this also. And the third one, I think the one of the most effective ones, it is from your networking. If you have uh, friends, relatives uh, who work in the company, you would really like to apply. It would be really uh, good for you if you talk to them, uh, talk to them about your desire to work in this company, uh, and uh, explain what what kind of are your skills and what you are capable of and uh, so on. In these cases, uh, due to having kind of good networking with these people from such companies, you can uh, also get applied to these companies. I think that the third one is really most effective. Uh, you should really uh, get close to uh, HR people. There's a lot of uh, conferences and the talks from these kind of companies you would get applied to. Uh, try to attend all of them and uh, talk to HR and uh, talk to people uh, who is kind of in this field. And uh, in the future, I promise you, it will help you to get really uh, kind of benefit from it. And about the idea of uh, what you need to do uh, in order to get internship. Uh, first of all, uh, given that you want uh, to apply to the company, uh, you have to have a set of skills. Uh, I suppose that the vast majority of you are from uh, foundation and first year. And from now, actually, uh, you have to improve your skills. Uh, first of all, it's about uh, soft skills. If you are a person from economics, kind of who wants to 
uh, work in finance, you better learn how to work on Excel, how to work on PowerPoint. And then it would be really great if you learn how to work on kind of difficult programs such as uh, Python, maybe, and the kind of uh, Power BI and such programs. Uh, it means that you are really capable of uh, working for the company and uh, your chance of getting a pie will be uh, higher actually, if you have kind of hard skills. Uh, second, it's about uh, how to get to improve your hard skills. Uh, there's a lot of courses. Uh, one source is Coursera. You can just uh, type Excel in the Coursera, Excel course, and the Coursera will provide you a uh, kind of bunch of a lot of useful courses. I really recommend the course from uh, Maguire University about Excel for Business. It is really good. Uh, secondly, second source is about Udemy. Also, the easy you can uh, go to Udemy and type, uh, and uh, they will provide any kind of useful knowledge that you can benefit of. Uh, one thing that in Coursera it is, I don't know, for our university it is free or not, but you can apply to financial aid, and uh, they uh, almost provide to everyone kind of financial aid, and you can study any course for free. Uh, on Udemy, uh, it is not that expensive actually. It's about uh, maybe ten dollars, and uh, usually there are a lot of sales. The courses which cost one hundred dollars usually uh, cost ten dollars. Uh, don't pay more than fifteen dollars for the course, because uh, usual price for the course is about really fifty dollars. And uh, in these websites, you can improve both your hard skills and the soft skills. For instance, if you want to improve your communication skill, uh, just type communication, negotiation, something like this, and uh, the platform will provide you anything you want. Uh, it's about the kind of first uh, set of skills that you can really do on your own, and it's not that uh, hard to improve. Uh, second set of skills, it is uh, something that you need to show to the company that you are uh, great like. For instance, uh, if you are going to consulting, uh, finance or economics area, uh, it would be really great for you to get participated in uh, business case championships. Uh, in this uh, championship, it is simulation of real uh, world uh, work. Uh, you need to collect team and participate in and the kind of improve your kind of knowledge in this area. Uh, how to do it? Uh, get subscribed to uh, case club, KFSA, uh, no accounting club, and the uh, change launch actually. These kind of four platforms where uh, people usually organize case championships. And uh, I really highly recommend you to get participated in these championships uh, from your first year in the university. Uh, for now, it really doesn't matter if you really have knowledge in this area. Uh, you really can uh, send me a message about it. I can explain how to participate, how to improve your knowledge and how to win these championships. And uh, I think that you will be really fine if you from now begin to uh, participate in these championships and uh, in the future you can really win it. Uh, why it is important? Because uh, given that you participated in top K championships and the kind of was in kind of top 3% of all kind of participants, it shows to the employees that you are really good, you are smart, you can work in the team, you have leadership skills and so on. Uh, personally, for me, uh, it helped more than my GPA actually, or more, more than other activities. Uh, due to the fact that I won a lot of case championships and the world on finance, uh, company accepted me easily. Uh, second uh, kind of uh, clubs that I could recommend, it's kind of a debating club, because in this club, you will really improve your critical thinking, your public speaking, your communication, your teamwork. And uh, if you have really time, I would really highly recommend you to get participated in the life of these two clubs. First of all, kind of case club, secondly, is debating club. And uh, it's kind of two uh, set of clubs that every economics student should have actually because it's really important given that we don't have any uh, finance courses or accounting courses in the university it is uh, kind of your public speaking your critical thinking and the working in the team it is only things that you can offer to your employee because 
uh, obviously you don't have such knowledge. Uh, what about this improving this knowledge? Secondly, if you want to get really improve your kind of specific skills, uh, I would really recommend you to study maybe finance, maybe accounting, if you get really interested, because for employee, it is important that you had some kind of basic knowledge. It doesn't mean that you have to have second bachelor in finance, but if you have basic knowledge, you have basic understanding, you can work with basic concepts, it is really crucial. Because when I get applied, first of all, I had a kind of uh, multiple choice test. It was about finance, it was about accounting, it was about business valuation, and it was about economics. And uh, my knowledge that I studied before really helped me to pass this test. And I think that in the vast majority of internships, they usually also pass test. Secondly, uh, it's about your interview uh, with senior consultants and uh, uh, managers. In these interviews, they uh, usually ask about your experience, what did you do in the university, why uh, you are kind of good, kind of your leadership skills, your critical thinking skills, and so on. And they ask about your kind of specific knowledge skills, like kind of do you know about such kind of finance concepts like NPV or IRR? And uh, it would be really better if you are able to explain it easily for them. On the last part of interview, you have the interview with like kind of with the main uh, guy in the company. Uh, we call them a uh, kind of partner or senior manager. Uh, in this interview, it is not about your knowledge about in finance or in kind of economics. It's about your uh, what kind of person you are, because in this conversation, you are like uh, you are like talking with your friends, and uh, it is really important to show uh, to the interview your desire to work, your motivation, kind of your fitness. To what extent do you fit this kind of role in the company, and uh, always try to be honest with the interviewer because it is kind of obvious when people lie and the usual interviewers feel it and they don't like it. Try to be honest, uh, try to give kind of uh, anything that you can give them. Okay. I said like, I don't know uh, how to work with kind of financial concepts in deep way, but in the basic I can, uh, I can kind of uh, make presentations on PowerPoints and like this and uh, I said, yes, it's good actually. We don't need kind of more deep knowledge because uh, important thing is that all of this kind of knowledges will be gained during your internships. Now I have internship uh, for two months and in these two months, I learned a lot of useful things because internship, it's not about just you invest in the company. Usually in the internship, in a company invest in you. Kind of they try to kind of improve your knowledge. They try to make you a kind of better worker. Uh, actually, it's all, guys. Do you have any questions? Yeah, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or you can ask them, unmute yourself and so on. Oh, Gulnaz, if you have a question, you can just unmute yourself. Uh, uh, I have applied to internship from the beginning of uh, summer, and it was really difficult to find internship. I looked for internship about four uh, months, actually, even maybe two months. Uh, if you can't find internship, it's okay. Just don't give up and uh, uh, still keep searching for it. It's not like you apply and they will accept it. Uh, I was in the third year, uh, but during the second year, it's also not the problem. Uh, we have uh, AIFC, usually a kind of MFCA, as they call, Международный финансовый центр. Usually they accept kind of students from second year. Uh, available internships, uh, actually no. Uh, it's not like internships are available or not. Usually company need interns, they post it and you can kind of uh, find it from here. I recommend you to subscribe to the companies that you really want to work. Maybe it's Ernest Young, maybe Deloitte, maybe McKinsey or Irugi. And they usually post on the Instagram, they usually post on the LinkedIn and such things. Do you have, is it necessary? Uh, actually, uh, it is 
not necessary to have high GPA, given that you are better on other things. For instance, my GPA was not that high, but I have a lot of accomplishments in this kind of business case championships and the debating something I participated. And uh, this set of things were more important to the employees and GPA. But it doesn't mean that you have to have a kind of horrible GPA. It's better to have GPA more than three and zero, I think. Uh, actually, uh, in big four internships uh, last for three months. After three months, they decide, will you be in the part of this team or not? If you uh, are kind of good intern, they can offer you another three months and then you can be kind of part of the team. What kind of sources of econ problems? Uh, for econ problems, it's actually uh, depend on the course you take. For instance, uh, if you take uh, Econ uh, 101, I guess a lot of uh, vast majority of them take this course, it's most important thing to attend office hours. If you attend to office hours and to talk to a professor about your problem, they can really help you. Because depending on each course, you have different books and the kind of different uh, set of kind of skills they need, you need to show on the midterms and tests. And I, I would highly recommend you to not be afraid to talk to his professor on the office hours, and uh, I'm sure he can help you or she. Uh, finance courses, uh, I can suggest you uh, Wharton Finance. On the Coursera, you know Wharton School, kind of it's from uh, Ivy League, I think. You can just uh, write uh, Wharton Finance on the Coursera, and they have a lot of courses on finance, and the financial modeling, and the financial accounting, and so on. And I think it's really good. Uh, actually, uh, it's not easy. I now have internship and I study at the same time. For instance, my graphic is I wake up at uh, 7.30 a.m. and go to work. Uh, I finish my job usually at uh, 8 p.m. Kind of, I work more than maybe uh, 11 hours. But it's not that uh, terrible because after work uh, i can study and uh, watch lectures for one or two hours and uh, actually it's enough given that you have two full days on a weekend but on saturday i can full day study my subjects and i can be fine uh find a job just to study always better to... uh, actually no uh i would highly recommend you to get a job after your bachelor degree a master's degree is not a crucial thing Moreover, it's about two years of your life. In this kind of two years, you can really get kind of uh, more provision in your career. Type uh, here is the names of sources. Uh, yeah, sure, I can type. Just a second. Guys, any more questions to Ali? Yes, I typed two uh, courses. You can just go to these courses and uh, find any uh, course you really want to. Uh, internship life, I never thought about it, but uh, actually I can type my Instagram and uh, probably I will post a lot of interesting things here if people are get really interested. Uh, in kind of, kind of uh, guys, true things that you all need to know about our university. Uh, our economics department is not about uh, practical knowledge or kind of business. It's about more research. It's about science. We study in our university economics in the context of science, because all don't be disappointed when you studied I don't know economics three hundred level. And you are kind of, oh, what the fuck is it kind of? Because there's a lot of uh, science knowledge and it's okay because our university is kind of science research university and we are supposed to study a lot of science things. If you want to study kind of for business finance, uh, you better study on your own actually. Uh, I would recommend for first year freshman who wants to declare econ major, 
first of all, uh, I highly recommend uh, don't uh, fail econ courses. For you, you need to understand that exactly econ courses are the most important. When you study, kind of, you have five courses, you begin to study subjects, the number one priority should be econ courses. Because in the future, when you get applied to the master's degree, uh, admissions of kind of, Harvard or Stanford will look not on your overall GPA, but on the kind of econ courses, how did you kind of pass it? Uh, I don't think that uh, in the big four, we have kind of marketing departments, uh, but it is better to get applied in uh, other companies. In Kazakhstan, we have kind of, kind of Coca-Cola, like Beeline, and in such companies, I'm sure that they have marketing departments and that you can apply to it, actually. Any more questions? We'll just wait a little bit and go on with the next speaker if there are not if there are no questions. Uh, yes, there will be certificate. Ah, not uh, usually. Yes, yes. Usually they provide certificate about your internship, but I didn't ask about this because it's not important for me. Uh, I'm not sure that programming is required, but it is better if you know. For instance, if you know how to work on a Power BI, it is good for you. It shows that you are better than uh, ordinary candidate, but it's not required actually. But uh, I still recommend you to uh, study how to work on a uh, program R or program, uh, I don't know, Stata maybe, uh, or maybe Python, because uh, if you don't know this, you are just ordinary student. You can offer anything kind of uh, unique to your employee. I uh, guess that's about it. Uh, uh, one more second. Yes, uh, I wrote the name of two softwares that would be better to work on. So everyone, this is the last chance. If you have any questions left, uh, you can write them down in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Yes, there are no more questions left. Uh, thank you very much, Ali, for your helpful speech. I hope you've learned a lot from it. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, who is uh, the representative of KFSA. And um, yeah, you're welcome, Alisher. Uh, hello, dear students. I just demonstrate my screen to open the presentation. So can you can you all see it? Yes, we can see the presentation. Can you see my screen presentation? Yes. It's okay, all visible. So hold your students. My name is Alisher. Currently I'm a president of Kazakhstan Finance Student Association. And let me first introduce our club for those of you who may not know who are we. So KFSA is a student organization based at Nazarbayev University that unites Kazakhstani students interested in finance and some of related fields, for example, consulting, accounting, audit, and so on. The main mission of our club is to create opportunities for students in the first career path and to promote financial literacy among our population. Um, before discussing the career opportunities for 
on major graduates. Let me talk a little bit about the patent of economics here at Nazarbayev University. Now, as you probably know, faculty, as you probably know, the Department of Economics is composed of faculty holding PhD degrees from leading American and European universities. In this slide, you can see the universities where senior members of the economics department previously developed their careers and also top journals in which faculty members regularly publish their research papers. So, as you probably guessed, one of the possible career opportunities is to start working on research papers in collaboration with faculty members and pursue an academic career in economics for the future. Our students are regularly placed into prestigious masters and PhD programs, including very popular ones like, for example, MIT Swan, University of Wisconsin Medicine, and Hopkins University, and mentioned most of the universities. And many PhD holders can also choose like international agencies, different houses, government policy, evaluation departments, non profit so in general, economics majors are now we have covered past in academics. In academics, but there are much more opportunities for economics. Uh. I'm sorry, I think my Zoom uh, didn't work well. Could you please say me on what moment I stopped? You are you were talking about this evaluation departments where they're working and stuff. Oh, okay. So let me continue. So in general, economics major are successful in wide variety of careers. And now we have covered career in academics, but there are much more opportunities for econ major graduates in other fields. Basically. Basically, the curricula offered by Nazarbayev University um, aims to provide excellent training at the level of the best Western programs in such fields as macroeconomics, microeconomics, game theory, and econometrics. And this knowledge are both theoretical and applied. This uh, program is designed to provide students with theoretical knowledge practical skills for the successful careers in private sectors, um, government, or other field in which a solid ground in economics would be an advantage, like, for example, international relations or corporate law. Although the economics major doesn't provide training for specific occupation, it provides the logical structure that pays off in understanding the big picture, the context uh, for entering several fields in corporate world. Its emphasis on thought, thought its emphasis on thought and, and has universal value. So having said that, let's briefly ask the lessons which cover many years of our university in corporate world. So before proceeding, I just wanted to ask, um, can you hear me well? Because my internet connection might just work so uh, there are lags sometimes. I'd suggest that you turn off your camera and just focus on the presentation, if it's possible.
Uh, sorry for the technical problems. It seems that Alisher is not having a very good internet connection. Uh, let's just wait a little bit for him to connect. The recording of this meeting will be uploaded to our YouTube uh, page, uh, AAO and you, I think it's called, uh, you can just search in YouTube Academic Advising Office and it will show up. I'll probably ask uh, the speakers to send me the slides later on, and then I'll uh, resend them to you in the Telegram chat. So yeah. I'm sorry, so Alina, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, so let me. Could you please give me like demonstration? Just cannot. So let me continue from here, I guess. So I, I talked that also the economics major doesn't provide the training for specific occupation, like for example, accounting or business. It, all, it provides the logical structure that pays off in understanding the big picture, the contexts which allow you to enter several fields in the corporate world. And its emphasis on logical thought and problem solving skills has universal value. So having said that, let me briefly discuss a few of the most popular positions occupied by con major in the corporate world. So the first one and probably the most obvious one is economists. Basically economists working for corporation help managers and decision makers to understand how the economy will affect their business. And they may analyze issues such as consumer demand and sales to help a company maximize its profit. Another very interesting position uh, which many of our graduates pursue is accounting and audit. Generally accountants and auditors prepare and examine financial records. Um, they ensure that financial records are accurate and that taxes are paid properly and on time. Accountants and auditors also assess financial operations and work to help ensure that organizations run efficiently. This field is dominated by so-called big four. Um, this big four includes companies like KPMG, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. Another interesting position is consulting. Consulting is simply the business of providing expert advice to a specific group of people. Management consulting is what most people think of when someone says consulting. However, there are also um, different fields like risk consulting, financial consulting, and so on. This field is dominated by large consulting firms like McKinsey, Bain, and Boston Consulting Group. Uh, they, these firms are hired to help businesses improve strategy and operations or manage some significant business events like mergers and acquisitions. So this was some of the most popular career paths pursued by the econ major graduates. However, uh, I want you to remember that being an economics major doesn't limit your career path to academics or corporate firms. You can build a career in law, medicine, government, policy, nonprofit organizations, international relations. And I think this list is probably endless because economics is an 
is involved in every aspect of the business and of our life. Everything depends on your interests, dedication, and hard work. Again, curricula offered by the economics department will provide you with necessary theoretical knowledge while joining different students club that unite people in interest in finance or accounting or economics in general. This will help you to seek amazing opportunities or find out more about possible career paths and just improve your social interaction skills because you will continuously network with your peers, with other students who have the same goal as you. So having said that, I would I'd like to talk a little bit about our activities, activities of our clubs. So one of such activities is finance courses. We organize finance courses in collaboration with representatives of international companies um, almost every semester for students of Nazarbayev University and other universities too. Some of such courses you may see here, it includes uh, financial risk management foundations or pre-CFA course, financial reporting, internship crash course, FIN 101, which is introduction to finance, and actually many other courses. When developing these courses, we often work with big international companies, like, for example, companies from Big Four, KPMG or EY or Deloitte, and some of the Kazakh banks. Another activity which we organize is case competition. As Ali said before, case competition is basically activity of solving real business problems with which company provides um, participants. The first case competition we organized was New Case Cup, and it wasn't that large, but in result, many winners received paid internships and courses from KPMG and also developed their skills, both theoretical and practical. Mm, the second case competition we organized was Generation Contest. Uh, so having gathered like experience in this field, we decided to organize a larger case competition around 1,000 participants from different countries like Kazakhstan, Russia, in, in China. And in result, around 40 finalists got internships and full-time job offers from largest companies like BCG, AFC, Deloitte, and many other companies. Besides that, we also organize guest lectures. So basically, on guest lectures, we invite um, eminent speakers from finance industry. experience and knowledge with our students. So here you can see the list of some people where we invited to like organize some of guest lectures. Auditions on which we um, with each other. Uh, last career forum we had what uh, about 20 companies and more than 1,000 CV submitted to like screening. And on info sessions. I'm sorry, can you hear me, Alina? It's better now, but sometimes um, you still got the slacks. Oh, okay, so let me continue. And on info sessions, we discuss interesting topics like finance, consulting, education, and investment with students who are interested in these fields. And after this pandemic situation, all our activities switched to online mode. We decided to organize online courses. Uh, we launched launched podcasts to talk about like interesting topics from economics with like some speakers from industry, and also we organized guest lectures in online mode through Zoom or any other platform. And this allowed us to increase our audience because now we have. Any students from any university can join our activity just through internet. Uh, another quite like important part of our online activity is social media. On our Instagram page, you may find a lot of interesting different concepts and topics from finance industry, and we have different 
rubrics like, for example, careers, internships, concepts, inspiration, books review. And it's actually maybe very helpful for people who just want to dive into this sphere. And finally, I'd like to talk about our community. So after switching to this online mode, we decided to create a um, community of students and alumni who are interested in finance and to gather them in one like group and provide them opportunities for networking, uh, collaborations, discussions. And we also regularly post some job offers there because I think it's kind of engaging and really useful for many students. So I hope that this session was informative and I wish you all the best in your future studies. And if you have any questions, I will be more than glad to answer them. And I'm sorry for this internet connection, just some problems of online presentations. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions to Alisher, don't hesitate to ask him by unmuting yourself or by writing your question in the chat. Oh, thank you. Actually, I learned how to make such kind of presentations um, after, like, in this club in KFSA, because when I was first year student, I joined it and I couldn't do anything. And working on different projects, I, like, developed several skills, not only in finance, but also with such kind of hard skills. Mm, yes, I can send presentation. I think uh, Alina, maybe you will, maybe I will send it to you and you can share with students. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's probably both of these ways, if I correctly understood the question, I think both of these ways are useful because I personally, like when we have had free access to Coursera, I try to uh, get as much as possible of this knowledge or of the certificates because I think it's so useful while talking about experience, um, working on any projects, for example, we all students, I personally, a third year student, student, and working on different projects, we just learn to do many things at one, like in little times, because uh, you try to communicate, to network with people, you try to learn hard skills to organize some projects. And actually, when somebody enters the club, he doesn't know many things. I think the club is uh, like a, a little copy of work when you can try yourself, try different skills and different positions and find out what you want to do. Okay. Mm, I can also, sh oh, you can see the Telegram channel here. Oh, so there's a link to it. You may just type it into search in Telegram and you will find. Mm, yes, in our social media, we share a lot of internship offers and job offers from uh, different companies, uh, not only in Kazakhstan, but also international. It's like part of our FYI rubric in which we not, not only share ex like some useful tricks and tips, but also internships as well. We have a lot of people who search for them and just uh, publish it on our stories or Telegram channel. Uh, regarding projects and activities, I have uh, just uh, discussed them. We have a lot of activities. Currently, we're working on uh, several courses as well as guest lectures and podcasts. And we have one like a big projects on which, which is kind of secret, but it involves a lot of people and on which we just try anything like working with a uh, company, uh, creating presentations, working in Excel, like these projects involve a lot of skills and if you don't know how like if you don't have any skills it's a good chance for you to learn them regarding 
exact projects I can you can see in this presentation. Maybe I can show just. So basically, we have different kinds of projects like finance courses, case competitions, uh, guest lectures, uh, like career forums, in sessions, uh, podcasts, and also social media is a big part of our like activity because our copywriters write a lot of different posts on different topics. And if you want to find out more about career path, I just described four of them, but there are like two, around 20 posts on our Instagram page about these careers. So I guess I answered. Uh, we actually just like around a week ago, we finished our recruitment, but probably we will have another recruitment in the middle of the semester, or if not, maybe in the next semester at the beginning. It really depends on um, number of projects we have. So when we don't have um, well, project managers, our members, when they don't manage to organize all the courses, we organize recruitment. So it's probably in the middle of this semester or next semester. So any more questions to Alushar? Also, if you have questions, you may write me or write, write to our social media accounts we can always answer your questions maybe it would be convenient for many to uh, to ask questions in instagram so i think at this point we should be done with the questions thank you very much Richard, for mm -hmm. uh, such a useful presentation and the information you provided and without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, who is the representative of Case Club. Hello, Ayajan. Hi, nice to hear you guys, see you. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ayajan. I'm the president of a new Case Club. And welcome to the introduction of our club. So basically today I'll be talking about the mission of the club, what is generally management consulting, what is a case, uh, how can a new case club help you in your future career and endeavors, our events and case solving practice. If we have time, we can actually solve with you guys one uh, small case. Okay, so basically what is our mission? What is the goal of our club? It is to popularize the sphere of strategic consulting among students. So as we know, um, even though we are economics major and even though consulting is basically tied to this sphere closely, we know that there is no particular course teaching us uh, consulting. Yeah, well, when in fact this sphere is quite difficult uh, and requires some preparation. And we basically try to be this bridge between students and the business sphere, business consulting uh, career, so that our students, when they graduate, they have some knowledge in terms of uh, how to apply to the companies, yeah, what kind of uh, recruitment process uh, is going to be there. And we basically help students to meet the candidate, candidate requirements of consulting firms. Yes, so we know that consulting firms have several stages of recruitment involving case interviews, uh, involving interviews with partners and HR. So in our club, we try to help students to develop hard skills in solving cases in particular, as well as soft skills. Uh, so basically, what is the management and strategical consulting? I'm sure that most of you already know that, but maybe just to refresh your memory, it's um, the practice, the common practice of helping firms and organizations to solve particular issues. 
Yes, so what kind of issues it can be? Uh, it can be uh, that a company wants to merge with another company yeah, and create a new one. It might be that the company is losing a lot of profit. Yeah, a company experiences losses and they need to come up with a strategy to maximize the profit. Yeah, so why should they bother to, to um, solve this problem when they can hire people? Yeah, uh, who are working especially on to solving this kind of problems. It can be that they want to introduce a new product. So for example, it might be Coca-Cola or Pepsi that want to introduce a new beverage. Yeah, in this case, uh, it is possible for them to hire consultants and they can help them to come up with a strategy in order to, um, in order on how to introduce this new product. Uh, so basically, management consulting uh, is deals with uh, creating value, profit maximization, maximizing growth, and basically improving business performance. Yeah. So uh, before me, um, other clubs possibly introduced you to the consult to the, to the main consulting firms that we have, uh, but let me just remind you that there are several. Uh, companies. Some of them are introduced in Kazakhstan, some of them are not. So uh, you all probably know Big Three. Uh, yeah, why, why is it called Big Three? Or it's also called MBB. Uh, this is three leading strategy consulting firms, uh, and they are the leading ones in terms of revenue, by revenue. These are McKinsey uh, and company, BCG, Boston Consulting Group, and Bain and Company. McKinsey and BCG, as far as I know, are introduced in Kazakhstan, while Bain is not. Uh, yeah, uh, most of, so our club aims mostly, uh, looks up to these firms mostly, because Big Four is also consulting, but uh, it's dedicated more to the accounting networks. Yeah, so they they were introduced as accounting firms, but inside these firms there are consulting departments. That is why it makes it possible to apply there too. So big four is Pricewaterhouse Coopers, KPMG, Ernst and Young, and Deloitte. Apart from it, uh, we also ah so all these four companies are introduced in Kazakhstan. Apart from this, we also have Oliver Wyman. Oliver Wyman, I know that it's popular in, so it was introduced in Russia and there was a case competition organized by this company. And there is also Accenture. Accenture was introduced in Kazakhstan not long ago. And one of the first presentations that they did uh, introducing their company to the students was in Nazarbayev University organized by our club. Um, this company is also consulting, but they provide their services mostly in the sphere of IT. Yeah. Um, okay, so why students are interested in consulting? Yeah, what makes this sphere uh, so desirable? First of all, it um, provides an opportunity to get thorough understanding of different industries and their functions. So when you come to this company, you don't get just this uh, case from oil company. Yeah, and you work your whole career only on, in this industry, yeah, only in the industry of oil. No, when you come to the company, you get different projects from different spheres. But what, and what makes you and what makes it interesting and uh, valuable experience is that you um, you can dive in different industries. Yeah, you need to understand how things work in these industries, and that is why you get as much information as you can, and you get a lot of experience in the spheres, and it makes you as a worker on the work market. Yeah labor market, it makes you a very uh, desirable candidate because if you get experience from big four, big three companies, it makes you uh, yeah, a desirable candidate on the work market. So mostly people consider consulting as a starting point in their career. Yeah, they usually start off there and then move on to the particular industry. But some people stay there. It's also fine. But liquidity in this company in terms of labor is very high. Yeah, just so you know. Um, next, you 
why people are interested in consulting, it's because you develop valuable transferable skills. Yeah, like presentation making, like uh, soft skills, teamwork, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get to travel. Um, you work in a team-oriented environment, and uh, you work with clients to solve tough problems. Yeah, these problems are not easy. And if we have time, we will solve the case, and you can see uh, the case itself. Yeah, from from a real company and see the, the level of its difficulty. So we are talking about cases. What is, what is a business case, in fact? Yeah? A business case provides justification for undertaking a project. So you basically answer the question, should I do that or shouldn't I? Yeah? So if you, if you introduce a new product, should I introduce this product or shouldn't I? If I want to merge with another company, again, the same question, to be or not to be? Yeah? Uh, it evaluates benefit, evaluates cost and risk, not only of this project, but of alternative options that you have, and provides a rationale for the preferred solution. So um, if you choose a particular option, you need to fully explain why, why the solution is the best. Yeah. Uh, so skills and competencies required to solve cases. So Cases, as we understood, this is not an easy task, and to solve them, you need a set of particular skills. Yeah? So these are analytical and critical thinking, obviously, being open-minded, yeah? having a lot of uh, different industries with different functions there. It's really important that you have an open-minded character and you can understand the problem and accept the problem from different aspects see it from different aspects because you need to see all the risks all the possible outcomes and of course you need to have problem solving skills because you basically solve the problem you need to have a good um, understanding of how to structure the problem because structuring is the foundation or the basis for the uh, case solving. You also have to um, have an ability to work in a team because cases are usually a uh, teamwork. We have championships, which is the closest we have to the real company experience. And there you work, work within a team of, of four or five people. Yeah, uh, because the tasks are difficult and to solve these tasks by yourself is kind of an impossible uh, mission. You also need to have leadership skills and communication skills. Yeah, because as this is a teamwork, you need to have to learn to communicate as well as when you communicate with a, uh, partners or HR or person from a company who hires you, uh, you need to have the skills. So what does our club offer? Yeah. So as I said, we really want to help students to understand what cases are, how to solve them. And when, and when they go to the labor market, they have more options rather than going just to the industry. They can also go to consulting and start off their career uh, successfully. Uh, we offer case marathon and case breakdown, case club podcast. These three activities are um, the way we adjusted to the online semester. Yeah. Case Marathon is a project where we uh, launched a Telegram chat, where we posted uh, cases each week and students solved them and sent their uh, solutions to us. We had uh, two winners from previous, sem from previous two semesters, which were online, and they got valuable prizes. Uh, books of, about consulting. Case Breakdown is a new project uh, where we will solve the cases together with students. Mostly it is um, aimed at uh, third and fourth year students because they are closer to graduate. And we solve uh, this is like case solving sessions. There is also a case club podcast. I will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we have also workshops, case simulations, guest lectures, uh, case interviews and case competitions. Yeah, let me tell about it a little bit more. So I told about case marathon and we will launch it this semester as well. Um, 
we are deciding on the format for now, but you will definitely see it. There is also Case Club podcast. I will uh, provide links to our um, social media at the end. You can go to our Instagram page and see uh, the different issues of our Case Club podcast. Uh, we invite different successful graduates or just people from the sphere of consulting, young people from the sphere of consulting who have a lot of experience, who work in consulting companies and share their experience with us. Uh, and we just talk about uh, different strategies to prepare, how to approach cases, how to survive in a company, a lot of different stuff and a lot of different uh, topics. Uh, they are very interesting and I really encourage you to listen to them. For now, we have six, um, six uh, guests. Yeah, you can all find them all in uh, Instagram or on our uh, contact page. Uh, the podcast is available everywhere. Apple, uh, what, what is it? What is it also? Um, Contacte, Apple, Spotify as well, I guess. Uh, workshops. So when we were in an offline format, uh, we had a lot of uh, stuff going on. Uh, one of them is a workshop where we concentrate on a particular topic. So for example, how to make a good presentation. Yeah, and we break this topic down and explain everything about making presentations. So uh, in terms of uh, solving cases, there are a lot of different aspects, not only about making presentations, but also about working in a team, uh, making estimations, yeah, working with numbers, working on uh, brainstorming. Yeah, All of these things are really important. And we provide workshops not to cluster everything in one session, but to break it down and provide to the students more thoroughly. Yeah. So for, on, for, for now, in, on, in online format, it's quite hard to uh, interact with students this way, because on workshops, there was some kind of a particular atmosphere. Uh, but we will try to launch it this semester as well. Case simulations. Uh, case simulations is very similar to, it, it's like a small scale championship. Yeah, uh, students came up to us, divided into teams, and we solved different cases. So for one session, we had one big case, and then students presented these uh, solutions to us. We also had guest lectures, as I said, uh, from we invite different people from different consulting firms, from McKinsey, Accenture, BCG, uh, and a lot more others. Uh, so they provided us with uh, their recruitment process, what they do, how do they do it. It was very interesting. And one of the most important things is our case championships. Uh, we conducted a lot of case championships for the past years uh, with, in, in partnership with different companies. It was not only consulting companies, it was also industry companies. Yeah, For example, we had a client case championship where we invited BI Group uh, and BCG, Boston Consulting Group. And in partnership with these companies, we conducted a very large uh, championship with over uh, 500 participants on the first round. And in the final, we only had 10, uh, 10 teams. They had some monetary uh, prizes, yeah. Uh, also, we conducted a championship with Magnum, Magnum Cash and Carry. It was a business case competition before, right before the quarantine. And uh, yeah, so it, it also had some monetary valuable prizes, internships, and it was, it was a very good experience. Uh, yeah, so basically, these are most of our uh, activities for now. We, if you subscribe to our channel in Telegram and uh, yeah, the Telegram, Instagram, and VK, so you can be updated about our events. And if you want to uh, ask something about uh, subscription to our mail or recruitment, you can write to us on Case Club. Uh, a new dot edu kz. Okay, so um, 
Uh, let me see the chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I want to uh, proceed with the case. Yeah, the time allows us. Yeah, sorry, I showed the most of the answers, but well, I hope you didn't cheat. Okay, so basically, guys, I really want you to engage in this case solving. There are not a lot of us here, and I think it would be easier to conduct this case uh, solving. Okay, so basically, this case is taken from Yale casebook. Uh, which is quite popular. Uh, and our client is a manufacturer of casts and supports used in correcting bone structure. Yeah, you don't need to uh, dive in the, the way it is. it looks like or something. Just know that it supports the bones. They recently developed three new baby helmets. Yeah, uh, and would like to know if they should launch one or more of these products onto the market. Yeah. Specifically, it's a target is a target profit of one million a year reasonable. So uh, don't pay attention to the last question. We will have specific questions now, but uh, just know that we have a manufacturer who developed three new baby helmets, and they want to know whether they should launch another one or stay at three. There is an additional information, but it is provided on request yeah so if you need this information i will provide it to you but basically just know that uh u.s population is 320 million people and uh yeah helmets are a once use for a duration of a month yeah so first of all the first question what factors should our client consider in deciding whether or not to enter the market. Yeah, what do you guys think? What are the main factors? Okay, so here entering the market means more about introducing this new product. Yeah, so they basically enter the market of helmets and they decide whether they should um, proceed with introducing another type of helm. Sure, we need to look through the competition. Right, this is very correct. So we need to look what kind of competitors we have, what kind of product they launch, um, what else, how much profit they make, yeah, whether they are successful or not, and are they popular among people? Sure, good. What else? What do you think? What other factors should we consider? Should we launch this product or not? Depends on different factors, yeah? So what kind of factors? Okay, you can either write in the chat or you can. Yes, supply and demand. By supply and demand, we would usually consider the amount of consumers, uh, amount of customers. Yeah. Actuality, yes, it's also important. So actuality in the business world, uh, it's called market size. Yeah, so how many people need this product? This is very important and we will uh, later on look at this question so basically your answers guys are correct yeah uh, we just need to translate it in a more structured way and in a more um, business language yeah so let me show you this is how we usually structure this kind of questions yeah so in this case we divide this into market and profitability yeah we always you look at the profitability. In profit by profitability, we mean are we going to gain from this, uh, yeah, from this uh, project or not? So profitability is divided into two. Yeah. So basically, we have revenue and costs. We know that profitability is revenue minus cost. This is basic. It, it's not even any intermediate or advanced economics is just basic economics. You don't need to be genius here. This is just profitability divided to revenue and costs. And we need to consider revenue and costs differently. So we need to look at the revenue, how much of units are sold, price per unit, and uh, the same in costs. And in market, we need to look, of course, at the consumers, yeah, the market size, how many people are going to need this product. We need to look at the competition. And we need to look at the alternatives. What kind of alternatives we have? Okay, great. So now we need to 
estimate the market size for baby helmets? So this is a very broad question and it's quite difficult. So I will start off by uh, providing some computations and then the rest of the computations I would ask to, for you to do. So um, yeah, basically I had some additional interest. Yeah, here. So this is exhibit. So when you have a case, uh, basically the person who conducts the interview, he will provide you with some additional information, some diagrams, some tables for you to work on estimation somehow. But uh, some information you need to ask yourself. So it's very important that you can ask uh, correct questions. Yeah, so here we have this exhibit, uh, need for baby helmets by age group. So age groups are from zero to three months, three to six months, up to 18 plus months. And we actually don't need a lot of stuff from here, mostly this one, yeah? The percent of need of helmet in age group. So now what do we need to know? So basically here, these two proportions, they don't need this baby helmets and we look only at these four groups, yeah? From zero to 12 months. Now, in order to calculate the market size for baby helmets, we first need to understand how many children, yeah, babies we have in US. And this is very easy to compute because we have US population of 320 million, life expectancy on average, yeah, 80 years. So you need to know that in uh, cases, you, you are not always precise. Yeah, you can take some uh, rounded numbers. Yeah, it's also okay because you, for example, this information was not provided to us. Yeah, we take it from our head, from our common sense. And that is why it is okay to take this information as rounded. Yeah, so we take it as 80 years and the number of live births, yeah, so number of babies basically is the population divided by life expectancy, which is 4 million per year. Yeah. So we have 4 million babies. What do we do next? We have 4 million babies and we have four groups, yeah, which need this help. So what do we do? We divide 4 million babies by each group. So each group, 1 million, yeah, 1 million from 0 to 3, from 3 to 6, from 6 to 9, from 9 to 12. So um, yeah, we don't have much time. So I will just go, go quickly through the solution. And if you have questions, you can ask me that. So for age groups, so in total, 1 million babies per age group. And from here, we can calculate the number of babies per year that need helmets, yeah? So how do we calculate that? We take 1 million and multiply it by the percent of need in helmet per age group. So in this age group, we have 1 million babies and 2% of them need the helmet, yeah? So we just multiply it and get the number of babies who need this helmet in this age group. The same we do for each of the age group here, 1 million times 1.2%, which is here, uh, 1 million times 0 0.4, 0 0.4, yeah, oops, here. So in fact, we get the for, yeah, in, in a year, babies need, uh, 40,000 babies need helmets, yeah? And as we know from here, helmets are once use for a duration of months. So they, they don't need uh, it constantly. They only need it once in their lifetime. So that is why we take 40,000 multiplied by one helmet per baby per year. And that's how we get 40,000 helmets per year. So this is our market size. Yeah, we have 40,000 babies who need these helmets. We, and from here, we have 40,000 helmets per year. So this is a very small yeah, part of case. This is not the whole case. It's just first two uh, sub, sub, sub questions, okay? This is how this cases usually look like. They can be analytical, yeah, to, to decide what kind of factors we have and uh, estimations, yeah? So note here that this is not full answer here 
because from from this structure we need to go on talking about each of these subgroups yeah so if this is consumers we need to understand what kind of consumers we have their age their uh, needs their um, location geographical location if it's competition what kind of um, companies we have what kind of revenue they make their top their percentage or in the market so each of these sub groups yeah of sub topics need to be investigated further yeah this is not the end of the of the answer you, you need to dive in and in and in to find the to provide the detailed good answer yeah so uh, do you have questions guys uh, about the case about the club itself uh hello i just joined in and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, i'm interested in joining a case club becoming a member of it uh, mm -hmm. so i have a question also connected to major in order to be like uh, you know successful in solving cases should you choose a major like economics or you can have like any background uh, like engineering background because I heard different opinions about it. Some people say that uh, you should study economics, but some people say that uh, study something else and then uh, do like masters in economics or something like this. So, yeah, yeah. I understood your question. I get the, that question a lot. As I said, yeah, in the very beginning, uh, the cases can be of different industries yeah you can get engineering case you can get uh i don't know uh, oil case chemistry case uh, and that is why your background doesn't matter actually yeah it is good to have basic knowledge in economics yeah but to be a good consultant yeah you don't have to be an econ economist you can be uh CS major, computer science, you can be engineer, you can be anybody, but if you have some basic understanding of economics, if you have some background, then you can be successful. Okay, any other questions? And about uh, joining the club, uh, what events, because I missed like the most, I guess, the yeah. presentation. Yeah, so uh, joining the club can mean different things. You can become a part of a board. Yeah, so the, the recruitment to the board was is uh, finished, but we will do another one. Uh, it, it is to organize events with us and to provide information to the students with us. Yeah, help students. But if you want just to be good at solving cases, you don't have to join the club, actually. You can participate in all of our events, in workshops, in um, uh, case simulations, case marathon, uh, listen to our podcasts, and that's how you can actually succeed. So we have a lot of students who were not the part of the board, but succeeded in their career just because they were active in participating in our events. Yeah, just participating in our events is actually useful to become a good consultant if you really want to organize events and help students if you have this desire um, to build this teamwork and network then you can join our club you can if you are really desperate to join you can write to our email case club no you do kz and write that i really want to join your club and uh, attach your cv then maybe we can consider you Okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Any any other questions here? Guys, don't be shy. You can either unmute yourself or write your question in the chat, and I will read it out loud to Ayran. Or either I may consider my presentation to be that successful that I provided everything. OK. 
Okay, if there are no questions, then I can stop my presentation. Yeah, so all of the information about the events that we have, you can find on uh, in here, yeah, in the right corner. In UK Club in Instagram uh, channel and a new case club uh, vk so we will post everything about our future events about our activities there and you can just uh, keep updated yet subscribe to it and you will be updated every time okay hey guys if there are no more questions left i will thank ajan very much for this very useful presentation that you made and for the information you provided to our students. And also thank you to everyone who decided to join us today. I hope that this session was uh, helpful to you, that you got something that will help you in the future. And uh, also know that the recording of this uh, Zoom session will be uploaded to our YouTube page. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys.